Alright, so first of all, I'm aware this setup's kind of ghetto. I'm hanging this webcam off the like collar of my shirt. So forgive me if the webcam looks kind of iffy, shaky, etc. Anyways, the point of this video is that there are a few people wanting to learn Ape Escape 3. And it seems pretty common for people not really who like watch speedruns of it watch my streams and stuff to not really understand what's going on and what I mean when I say the terms boost jumping or like boost flying and okay we're gonna do a history lesson first of all I guess um, as I noted in one of my older videos uh, boost flying is a trick that was found by Japanese runners for Ape Escape 2 which was later found to be also doable in this game and there wasn't... I don't really know if there was, they had a name for it, so I just kind of came up with my own name and I just called it Boost Flying. I mean, it's just... I mean, it's a trick that lets you gain more height with the Sky Flyer. A boost in flying in your flight. Boost Flying. Pretty self-explanatory. But it was also later found out that if you just don't use the Flyer, you can still get a boost in height with your jump. Plus boost jump, pretty self-explanatory. Um, anyways, it's pretty much just uh, the two freight like two terms, pretty much just mean just like it's pretty much just a boost in your height via switching your gadgets at the right time after swinging in midair. Anyways, um, I need to like. Eesh. It's kind of, it's really awkward to like look at my screen, but also make sure the webcam's all in the right spot and stuff. I'm not moving and whatnot. Anyways, um, to boost fly, or to boost jump, okay, let me make this straight, or make this clear. Boost flying is boost jumping, in that you do boost jump to do a boost fly. Like a boost flying, like boost flying is just boost jumping but switching to the flyer and then just flying afterwards. But pretty much to boost jump, or boost fly, after you double jump you swing your gadget. It has to be, it has to be any of the gadgets you can swing, like the club or the net. And right after you swing it, you need to cancel your swing into another gadget. So like you see his net, how he swings it forward. And if I cancel it right away, you don't even see him swing the net. But if you notice here, if you look at like K's animation while he jumps, this is his normal jumping. You notice he has like his like one fist in the air. His other hand's a little bit lower. When you do a boost jump, he like has both his hands in the air. It's kind of stiff in his animation. Looks quite different. If he like does a jump like this, you know you got a boost jump. And pretty much to boost fly, you just do the same thing, except you just switch to the flyer and then just fly right afterwards. Now, in order to do this, you have to really quickly, right after you double jump, you have to swing right after, like pretty much right as you do your double jump, like almost at the same time. And then right as you swing, you also need to switch to another gadget, like as soon as you can. And my strat for doing this is for like if you need to like say I don't know say you have the flyer the sky flyer on square triangle or just whatever you need to like have on that those slots after I swing like I do my double jump and I swing right afterwards so it's like jump jump swing and as I swing, I'll slide my thumb off on the square or on the triangle. And if you notice, like that. And if you look at the screen, I'm clearly doing boost jumps. And I mean, if I had to fly on either of those, I'd just go after I'd. Like, I'll just do this. I would just swing the stick. At, I would just go back to swing the stick afterwards after I slid my thumb. 
Now, uh, for circle, it's a little bit trickier. I mean, I'm using these examples because usually it's pretty much like every Ape Escape runner has uh, the net on X. It's the default. It's pretty easy as well. Now, for circle, it's a lot more complicated to like slide my thumb, like slide your thumb this far away from the stick, and then go back and spin in time. So what I do is I is I actually personally I like claw grip, and I'll try to do this without shaking the camera too much because I kind of have to move a little bit. But right after I jump, I swing and then slide and then just have my thumb stay in place, ready to spin, like such. Anyways, that's pretty much the. I hope that explains enough how to just do boost jumping and boost flying. Now, the reason I'm here in this stage at this spot is this is the one monkey pretty much in the whole game where you have to use boost jumping to catch him early. Normally you have to ride these, I don't know what you'd call these, tram, train, trolley, thingamabobs over to him. But you can actually boost jump right near the railing and then have the auto adjust because like in this game if you're like close enough to a monkey and you swing in its general direction, it'll be the game will be like, oh, all right, I'll give it to you. It'll like position you closer to him to like in the right spot to catch him. But um, to do this, you actually have to. It's I mean, it's not just as easy as just boost jumping up. You have to have a specific timing. And uh, since I really don't recommend doing boost jumping onto X, like as I was explaining it, you're going from like X. To square, triangle, or circle. I would not really recommend. I don't know. Trans. Like. Canceling a gadget into your net or whatever is on X. It's just a lot more awkward. It's like. I don't know. Maybe not. For me, it's just. It feels like it's too close. So, what I do for this part is I just quickly switch the club and the net's positions. Now, what you need to do is, uh, when you boost jump, you have to pretty much, by the peak of your boost jump, you have to be against this wall in order to have the auto adjust pull you over the railing to catch him. And when you do your boost jump, you have to wait until you're at the very peak of your jump so that you're closest to the monkey over the railing. And... That's pretty much it. I mean, it's just a matter of timing. I mean, it's a matter of timing just to do the boost jump and the boost fly as well. But you have to time your catch as well, just to make sure you get this guy. So, I mean, pretty much I just like, I'll linger a bit just to make sure I'm as close to him as I can be before swinging. And I'll just show it here. It's pretty much 100% consistent once you just learn the timing of when to swing. Uh, there's another method that was, this was the old strat where the knight and the ninja form can actually slide over this with their air catch. Like if you catch in midair, you can just slide up walls. But this is a lot more inconsistent as to get this you have to pretty much jump from this higher point. Like it's, you have to get like a running start and as soon as it like auto places you on the top. You have to like time your jump and then get up here. I'm actually surprised I got it first try. It was actually kind of convenient, but anyways. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend just practicing and learning this strat. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So again, you just need to like boost jump. And I guess this might help people. Like, when you boost jump up here, you might see how he kind of like freaks out in midair. You know, like... <laughs> jitters about. That's the game, I mean, that's pretty much saying that you're just shy of being able to get over the ledge. But, kind of like you can see how, that's pretty much when around when you'd want to swing as well. Or just give you an idea of how close you want to get. You just want to get up here and then swing when you're at the peak of your jump, closest to the monkey. Now if the monkey does see you, he's gonna start running around and freaking out, like freak out. And by that point in a speedrun, you'd wanna probably just abandon this strat and try and 
go up there quickly with a knight. Otherwise, if you just want to practice this or you insist on using this strat, you'll have to like run away back here. Wait for him to calm down, then he'll return back to his original spot where you can boost jump and catch him. Anyways, um, yeah, I hope this has been handy. I kind of just decided to make this on the, on the spot. So I didn't really, like, I don't know, prep a speech or anything. So, yeah. Hope that's been helpful.